Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on the air slate flow diagram. My name is Colin Tubner, and I'm the head of our customer solutions department at AirSlate, which is responsible for helping people learn about the product initially and also helping people get up and running with the product. Uh, this, this webinar is primarily intended for people who already know AirSlate and have been working with the older flow designer environment and would like to know more about the flow diagram. But if you don't know AirSlate already, we'll have a little bit of information for you as well. So just a quick agenda, and this, this won't be a very long presentation. First, I'll just remind people on some AirSlate terms to give us a background for the presentation. Secondly, we'll talk through the flow designer and what it includes. Uh, third, we'll talk about how you can get this flow diagram enabled in your AirSlate workspace. And then we'll have some questions and answers. So let me switch over to the product here. Oops. And so uh, just to, again, a refresher on the terms in AirSlate, there's two main terms that you really need to know, which are flow and slate. The flow is the template for what happens. Each time you create a flow, you're creating a pattern that the system will follow as slates are created. And the slates are what contain the documents that follow through the steps in the flow. So for the purposes of this, I'm gonna create a flow and you'll be able to see the template. Um, and uh, we're, not, we're not even gonna really create slates and have those go through the diagram. Uh, also on the side of background, um, we'll be showing the new flow designer today, which is a diagram. Uh, before this diagram was released, there was an old flow designer, which involved having um, basically just bots that were responsible for sending the slates to different roles during the course of the flow. Um, so there was no diagram that showed you everything that would happen during the course of the uh, workflow. Um, this graphical environment is a lot easier, but it's different. And I think for people who are familiar with the old environment, it's important to know that you can do all of the same processes you could do with the old designer in this new graphical environment. So I'm just going to add a document to our flow here. It doesn't really matter what the document is because we're just going to be looking at the workflow designer. Um, but uh, what used to be called a role is now called a step. So in the old designer, you had roles. Now we've got this workflow tab and you've got a graphical layout of the steps in the flow. Um, so each step defines the field mapping to the document and also the rules about when you should proceed. Um, you can add as many steps as you want to to this just by dragging them or clicking these little plus signs here. And you can also add branches. Uh, and so then that allows us to do conditional routing to different parts of the process. If we click into a step, you'll see that we can assign fields to that step. So this is similar to the way fields were assigned to roles in the past. And this is saying that at this step in the flow, the person who's interacting with the slate should work on particular fields in the document. In addition, there's conditions on each step. So this is similar to the conditions that would have been on a send a slate bot previously. Uh, now these conditions will control whether the step happens. Um, these can be used in a couple of different ways. So here happens when revision status equals completed, that's the default. In this pattern, the workflow will always just go forward. Uh, it'll go forward to the next step. And then in the branch, it would follow every branch of the branch. Uh, if I change this to something like, you know, when this field has been, is not empty, then if for some reason the person didn't fill out that field at the first step, the workflow would end instead of step two happening. And that might happen sometimes. For example, if you have an approval that only needs to happen when a condition is a certain way, you could set that up using these conditions. You can also have jumps. Uh, and again, loops in a workflow could previously be modeled by having multiple send to slate bots. Um, here, you can set this jump. We'll set the recipient. So this is very similar to the conditions for a step. You can say when this jump should happen. Um, so again, we would probably select some information from one of our uh, fields on the document. And then 
that jump is displayed visually on the diagram, both here where it leaves from and also here where it arrives. So the jump from step two, it shows what the condition is and you can delete it from here. Um, one trick with jumps, you wanna make sure that the step is set to happen multiple times. Um, so if this step were only to happen once, uh, then it wouldn't be able to start when the jump comes to it. And perhaps more importantly, if you want this to go in a loop, which you probably do if you're jumping back to a previous step, then this step here also needs to be set to happen multiple times. Uh, now there's also bots and bots are really the same as before. So bots allow you to automate many things both within the workflow and also integrations. Those substantially work the same way. The only difference is that certain bots that you may be familiar with if you use the old flow designer are now built into the flow. Um, I already mentioned the send a slate to roll bot and that's built into either the step itself or the jump concept. So that bot isn't needed anymore if you're building in the flow diagram. There's also a number of bots which start the flow automatically and those are accessible also here from the diagram on the flow start tab. Um, so a number of these things, again, in the old flow designer were displayed as individual bots that you would add to the flow. Now you can add them right here on flow start. So starting a, a flow on a schedule from another flow, um, each time a Google Sheet is updated, all of these, again, used to be bots that were added separately. So um, for, and hopefully if you're a, a avid air slate flow creator, you're excited about this diagram. It's really a lot easier to create flows. And maybe more importantly, it's very easy to understand the flow if you didn't build it and understand how it works and how to change it. Uh, if you would like this turned on for your workspace, all you need to do is contact support and they will turn it on. Once you do that, uh, the old flow designer will not be available to build new flows, but Flows that you built in the old designer will still be in that old designer and you can change them. Uh, that's really not a problem because everything you can do with the old designer, you can do in this diagram and really much easier in most cases. Um, so again, contact support, uh, they can turn on this flow diagram for you and they also can help with any questions that you have about the flow diagram. So at this point, I'm gonna switch over and we can take any questions from the audience. Yeah, I uh, have a question. Uh, if you can, can go back to the diagram. Sure. There's like these boxes where uh, an email, which is required in the on the step visualization itself. Uh, is that uh, the box for the email? Mm, that is uh, required by uh, default. So is a default assignee, uh, a person who the email will be sent to multiple times when the slates are created? Yeah, so that is maybe, uh, it could be confusing for somebody who's just coming to this. Um, so you know, most of the time, if you're setting up a template, you wanna use this default recipient as the recipient. Um, over here, uh, the this one will override that. And what this is for is sending a single copy of the slate out to somebody. Um, so again, this would override the default that's set. Um, and uh, you know, it depends on whether an email is required here or if it's relevant, depends on how you're starting the flow. So for example, if you're starting the flow from a public link, the person who clicks that link will get step one um, when they click the link. And so you don't need to put an email on this first step. Um, so, you know, if I turn on the shareable link, uh, it does still say required here, but that's, you know, not necessarily required for somebody who's starting from the link. So if we want to go ahead and resend the slate multiple times, for instance, uh, to step two, to a static email or to a field within email, then uh, we just go ahead and hit on the gear and then uh, put the email in default recipient, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, thank you. Would you please confirm um, if I understood you correctly, there is that there is no more need to add a send a slate board to the specific roles in, uh, and that uh, all the boards are already implemented in the workflow? 
That's yeah. So at least the send a slate bot to or send a slate to roll bot, uh, that one's not needed anymore. You can do that between having a step on here, branches and the jumps. Um, so you shouldn't need that bot anymore. Now, a lot of bots you still do need, um, especially the integration bots, but also things like, uh, you know, the one that removes signatures or the one that changes signature types. There's a lot of both internal and external bots you still need, um, but there's a few bots which you really don't need anymore with the graphical flow designer. Thanks, I see. Hi, Colin. Um, I think you've already answered my question, but uh, just to confirm, uh, could you please um, let me know if the, um, if the document, the slate, automatically goes to the next step once the previous step has uh, completed their part? So yeah, the, the, it's a good question about you know whether steps start automatically. It's a little different from how bots would start steps in the past. And so the step execution conditions is the important part here. Um, this is the one that I edited when I was building the diagram. If you look at this one down here where it says happens when revision status equals completed, that's the default. And so the default, it will, as you said, it will automatically start each step after the previous step is completed. Um, so normally if you just have a diagram, it will just go step by step through the diagram. But if you set conditions here, um, that could make it so that the step will not go unless the condition is true. Uh, and so, you know, I gave the example of maybe if you have an approval, which is only needed if like an invoice is over a certain dollar amount, let's say. So, you know, the VP approves invoices over $5,000. You could have a condition here. And if, you know, the invoice is under $5,000, the flow would just end before reaching that step. Okay. Thanks a lot. That answers my question. And so uh, you have this thing here, which is branches. Uh, does that allow for a parallel signing when multiple people can sign at the same time? Or is it more like a, like a um, divergence of the, of the slate recipients? Yeah, it, it, it can be used for both. And it again, it depends on the conditions. So if the conditions are... Uh, both, you know, in this case, like the default, both these branches would start in parallel and both people could open it. Um, and you can add more branches if you want. Uh, but again, if the conditions are different, then each one will um, start on its own, uh, depending on the conditions. So you might set conditions where only one branch even starts. Uh, again, like with the, you know, the example of an invoice where the approval amount is $5,000, maybe make it a little different example where, you know, the VP approves under $5,000 and the president approves over $5,000, you'd have a VP branch and a president branch and different conditions so that only one branch could run. Okay, thank you. And uh, just a last question for me, uh, what do I do with the flows that I already have with the role user UI? Uh, do I somehow manually uh, convert them or do I have to build them from scratch? Or what so do do? We are working on tools to allow our customers to directly go in and convert flows from the old designer to the new one. Uh, while those aren't ready yet, uh, support does have the tools already to do the conversion on the back end. So if there's a flow that you want to start working with in the um, graphical diagram right away, please contact support and they can convert it for you. Later on, we'll be contacting customers with information about how they can do this on their own as well. Okay, nice, very well, thank you. Great, so I think that's all the questions and we will wrap up. Um, again, you know, if you have any issues with the diagram, any questions or just need it turned on for your workspace, you can contact support either through chat inside the AirSlate product or the email support at airslate.com. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.